Okay. Okay, so this is the last class day. There's no class on Tuesday. And the final is Thursday. Yep. All right, so I have a few things to tell you. Um, the first thing is that I'm going to post the instructions, basically page one uh, up for the final. Oh, it's on the bottom though. Did I bring it up to the top? All right, so I posted it. <laughs> oh yeah, right, good. Right. Okay, so I'm going to, I posted the instruct. So the reason I did that is because there's choice on the final. And I just want you to know before you get there, what you're going to have to do so that you don't have to read it and digest and say, oh, what am I going to do? The first part, you have to do all the problems. There's a, I don't remember how many, three or four. The second part, there's a choice of one out of three long problems. And then there's like, uh, something like 16 out of 25 that are kind of more multiple choice and but they do involve some calculations some of them and they're arranged uh, from the most recent material to the later to the earlier material so it might be good to look at some of the later questions first because you may actually find them easier than than you know so it's just up to you so that's posted uh, i will post I will post the solutions to all the activities that we're working on in chapter eight. I wanna say that there will be no molecular orbital theory on the final. That's not what we're doing now. What we're doing now is valence bond and valence bond theory is on the final. Um, um I, I I I'm not I'm not gonna post homework for chapter eight. It was uh, I had a homework assignment, but it was partially molecular orbital and it's just better for you to do the activities that I wrote that um that I'm giving you to practice on. Okay, so there's a handout here that is review for the since exam three. So it's got some extra problems on VS EPR Vesper. That's the geometry business. And also um, on this valence bond theory, there are two handouts that are new today, but there are other activities. I'll make sure all the activities are posted. I'm going to post um, the solutions to exam three, um, probably over tomorrow or something like that. Um, I see a lot of people are coming now. It's okay. <laughs> All right, um, let's see, what else is I gonna tell you? Oh yeah, problem sessions. You seem to like the Zooming in the evening. Is that true? Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna do uh, Tuesday and Wednesday at 7 p.m. Um, and I would appreciate it if a couple of you might email me an hour or so before. <laughs> um, Although last time, for some reason, my phone was off. So I didn't even get the emails that I didn't show up to the meeting. <laughs> but anyway, I'm sorry. I, hopefully I won't do that. And another thing, this is pretty important, is that you have to do this campus climate evaluation of this course. I would appreciate it if you did that. I'm supposed to do that, to tell you to do that. So here I am doing it. Um. Does anyone have a question about the mechanics of the end of the year or, you know, as far as like, I don't know. Well, if you have, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's two hours. Yep. Yeah. Paul, are you raising your hand? What's your question? Oh yeah, bring the gotchas to the final.
Very important. Thank you. I don't know. I'm sorry. I just don't know. They probably do like the 27th or 28th or something. Yeah, it's after Christmas. Or maybe not because the term is ending a little sooner this year. You know what? I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll, I probably will know it by then. It'll. I, I won't wait that. I don't think I'll wait that long to post it. I don't have that much grading to do except the final. <laughs> In past years, I've had lots of lab reports to grade, but not this year. Okay, so we're up to the last type of orbital hybridization that, that I'm teaching you about. <laughs> so, so far, we have had two types. When you have four groups of electrons on an atom, it forms sp3 hybrids, four of them. Um, when you have three groups of electrons, and remember, multiple bonds are one group, lone pair is one group, you will have three sp2 hybrids. We'll do a lot more on this later. But um, the hybrids I'm telling you now form when an atom has two groups of electrons. And, um, and I'm going to give you this very classic example. This is acetylene. This is what the torches, acetylene torches. This is the fuel that they use. And you could see from what I'm showing you here that you have, there's your one group, and this is the second group. So you have two groups of electrons on this carbon, but you also have two groups on this carbon. Okay, and now we're gonna start to do this all the time. We're gonna start to treat all the non-hydrogen atoms as, as something that is a has an orbital hybridization. So we will be able to figure out um, all the hybridization in a, in a, in a molecule. Hydrogen, we never do this to, right? Because hydrogen always just has a 1s. It has only a 1s, and that 1s will overlap with whatever hybrid orbital is next to it from the other atom, okay? So anyway, here we are, acetylene. I lost a bond somewhere along the way. So each carbon has two groups of electrons. Um and they will end up forming these sp hybrids. These are from 1 to s. Oh boy, it's starting early today. Okay, all right, all right. Let's stop the share. Let's... It seems to work all, you know, it's all the zooming that I think is the problem, but um, share that screen again. 1, 2S and 1, 2P. And you will get two SP hybrids. Each is one part S and one part P, okay? So here they are. This is not the greatest picture, but it's the best one I could find. Here's your one, two S, which I would have drawn larger because they should be around the same size as the two P, but oh well, and one, two P. And as you may have noticed, all of these hybrids have a shape where you kind of have um, these, these, you know, a bigger lobe, and a smaller nut lobe, but this one is showing you that the nucleus is actually not in the center. But don't worry about that. Most of the time when we draw these things, we don't even put that second lobe in there. You see, you'd have a second lobe in there for each one of these. One of these is an SP, this should be like that. That's an SP pointing. So the carbon nucleus would be in here. We'd have an SP pointing that way and an SP pointing that way. And they would each have a little node uh, and then would have a node and then a little lobe on the other side, but this is always left out. So this is the, um, the nucleus, which we are, this is going to happen at each of these carbons in acetylene. 
Yeah. What do you mean, where does it go? It's combining with this. And and it's like, these are like the daughters or sons of S and P. Could make a movie by that title. <laughs> Right. So you so so the thing is, I've been telling you about these hybrid orbitals, the four SP3s, the three SP2s, the two SP, but all the books draw them the same. Like the four SP3s, you they draw them like this. And th there's always a little lobe on the other end, but they don't bother with it. So it's basically you have four looking like that. SPs, well, they kind of draw them with the same look but they just put them at 120 degrees, whereas these are at 109.5. These are 120. SPs, you really have one like that and one like that, but they don't put that second lobe in there out of simplicity. So it's just like this. And so this is 180 degrees. The thing is, they don't really all look the same. The SP3s are more elongated the SP2s are a little less elongated and the SP, I don't know, I'm not doing a very really good job of this, but what really is true is that this is more elongated, more P-like. And then this, this gets kind of fatter until with the SP, it's really pretty fat. And this is more S-like because the S is a spherical orbital. So it's sort of fat, fat, all fatter in a way. Um, but, you know, it's just too much of a distinction for books to make. So they just draw them all with the same kind of look. You get one lobe pointing one of the directions. Um, they just draw one lobe. They, they like leave this out. It's as if it doesn't exist. Okay. So what I want you to understand is that this is two SP hybrids. You normally, you know, you should have a lobe going there, but they never draw it. So just leave it out. So you have one going this way from this middle atom and one going this way. That's not a P orbital. <laughs> That's two SP hybrids. No, I'm not going to ask you to draw any orbitals. Okay. Um, we just didn't have enough time to do that. So this is the last energy diagram I'm giving you. We want to look at carbon. And we know we have two electrons in the 1S. What am I doing here? I meant to write 1s, two electrons, 2s, two electrons. And then we have three 2ps. And as always, the first thing we do is, no, not from the 1s, we promote an electron from the 2s. So we end up with 1s, 2s, 2p with single electrons. In, the, in these 2s and 2p. So this is, we promote a 2s electron to the 2p. Then we hybridize where we end up with, in this case, we have two sp hybrids. So two of these only combine and we get two sps and then we have the two Ps that are left over. Two two Ps are left over. And so these are all half filled. We still have the one S. So this is on each carbon. On each carbon, and let's take let's put the Lewis structure here. On each carbon, you have one bond that's going to form. So you have two of these, right? You have another one. You have two carbons. Here's carbon number one. Here's carbon number two. So for each of them, one of them is going to overlap with a hydrogen. So it's going to overlap with a 1s on hydrogen. Okay. And that's the same here. What about this one? What about the other one? Well, that's going to be one of these triple bonds is always going to be sigma. And the other two are going to be pi. Always one of them is sigma. 
So you will have overlap of these sp hybrids. So if I go down here and I draw like two carbon nuclei like this, and I draw an sp and another sp, so these are both sp, and I do the same thing on the other one. So what I have these dots are the carbon nucleus, right? This is the sigma bond between the SPs that forms the first of the triple bond. Hybridize. There's a rule. There's a rule is four groups of electrons, sp3. Three groups of electrons, sp2. Two groups of electrons, sp. It's that simple. Okay, we're going to practice with that. And now we have the overlaps with the hydrogen. This is the hydrogen 1s. This is the hydrogen 1s. And so, okay, now look at this. This is the internuclear axis for all of them because the hydrogen nucleus is right there. The carbon nuclei are all in a line. So these are all sigma bonds. So we have sigma from the sp to the 1s. So the sp on the carbon to the 1s on hydrogen. This is the same. And then we have the overlap of the two sps making the first of the three bonds between the carbons. And you could see that we have two leftover two p's. So what's gonna happen with them? you're going to get a pi orbital. You always have overlap of two Ps for the pi orbital. And there are two of them. So this triple bond here, one of them is a sigma bond. The other two, as I've written here, are the pi bonds from overlaps of the two Ps. So that's what we have here. Well, this is this one. <laughs> okay. The red one, well, let me try to do that a little better. So this one was the sigma sp, sp, and then we have pi 2p, 2p for these, for this one and this one. Okay, so, but that, so we have, for all, this is only the sigma bonding that I've shown you here. Now, if I take, I'm gonna make another drawing. It's just easier to put it on a different drawing. I'm gonna take those two carbon nuclei and put them down here. And now when, when you formed, when these sp orbitals formed, it only makes sense that the p orbital in this direction would give sps in that same direction. So you have leftover p orbitals that are like this and coming out, you know, coming out forward. So the one that was in this direction has already been used. So what we have then, if we go down here, is we have a p orbital like this left over. And then we have a p orbital like coming out of the paper and then going back. Not very good drawing, but. Okay. And you get overlap here for one of the pies and overlap here for the other one. And I have nicer pictures, which I've given out. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shade this orbital so you could see that this one is different from the other one. Okay, so the ones that are standing up overlap to give a pi, 2p, 2p. And then you have this one kind of coming out and going back and coming out and going back, giving you this pi orbital that's also from the overlap of two 2ps, 2p, 2p. And then you could also see the sigma bonding in here. So here's an sp2. Uh, sorry, an SP 
and another sp. Here's a second sp on this carbon bonding with a hydrogen 1s. And you have the same thing on the other side, the other sp on the second carbon overlapping with the hydrogen 1s. So this is sigma sp 1s. This one, sigma sp sp. Just make sure I label them right. Yeah, good. Okay. All right. So like I said, I will not ask you to, oh, I have other pictures. Wait here. So maybe you like this one better. It all says the same thing. The sigma bond between the SP and the SP. This is the sigma SP1S, sigma SP1S. And these are the pi's. So this is the one where they're standing up. And then this one, pi 2p 2p when they're coming forward and back. And that's how you make a triple bond. You have a sigma bonding in along the axis between the two. Then you have these p orbitals that overlap above and below the internuclear axis and on this side and that side of the internuclear axis. And that's what it looks like. So this is a picture. This is actually coming forward. And this is going back, back here. It's, you know, whichever way you like to think about it. I won't ask you to draw these orbitals, but I will ask you to do this. So here we have acetylene. And I will ask you to label the bonds and also sometimes the lone pairs usually with what they are, okay? So you should know that because you have two carb two groups of electrons on this carbon, each carbon, that you have sp hybrids. So you would have a sigma from overlap of those sp's as one of these bonds. And the others will be pi bonds with the leftover 2p orbitals. Doesn't matter which you label. The one on top could be the pi. The one in the middle could be the sigma. I don't care. This one is a sigma sp1s, as is this. Those things. You have to do what I just did here. That's what I'm going to expect you to do. So what our goal is, is really to be able to look at the Lewis structure of a standard garden variety molecule and figure out for each of the bonds, what type of bond it is, all right? What type of bond it is and what the overla overlaps are. So we want to be able to do that. We want to look at any Lewis structure and label all the bonds with the type of orbital and what overlaps with the type of bond, I mean, pi or sigma, and what orbitals overlap to form it. We'd also like to identify what orbitals the lone pairs are in. Okay, and we would like to do this without those energy diagrams. We wanna get away from that. I'm not gonna have any of those energy diagrams on the final. Um, so what we have to do is we have to start by looking at each atom, not hydrogen. Hydrogen always is going to form a sigma bond with something. So we're, we're, you're never gonna, Hydrogen only has one bond. It's always going to be a 1s involved in the in the bond. So we're going to start by looking at the number of electron groups on atoms other than hydrogen. If you have four groups, then you have four sp3 hybrids. I can't emphasize this enough. You also need to know that a multiple bond is one group. A lone pair is one group, but that is no different from the when we did VS EPR, VSPR, right? The geometry stuff. 
It's still the same electron groups. Three groups, three sp2 hybrids. Two groups, two sp hybrids. Okay, so it's really no mystery. It's that simple. So I want to, um, that's why I gave you this handout because this handout focuses on central atoms, but we'll go back and do some of the outer ones too. You, what? Yeah. Yeah. Because you, this one, two, three. C has two groups. The O has three groups. One, two, three on the O. So what is the hybridization at the O going to be? Right. So we've been only, we've been dealing with mostly the central atoms, but I have to, I'm going to show you that for the central atoms here, this all works, but I'm also going to look at the outer atoms here as well. So after I finish the central, I'll come back. So here you have one, two, three, four groups, four groups of electrons. That's a tetrahedral electron geometry. That's four sp3 hybrids on the nitrogen. Carbon, same thing. Four groups of electrons to the four bonds. You have four sp3 hybrids on that carbon. Oxygen, he, two of them are lone pairs, but it doesn't matter. One, two, three, four, sp3. Four groups is always sp3. And four groups gives you four sp3, right? Because we have orbital arithmetic. One, two s plus three, two p equals four sp3. One plus three equals four. Okay. Now, HCl, the chlorine is what this is pointing to, has four groups of electrons. So the, so the hybridization of the chlorine is going to be sp3. Notice I'm not paying any attention to hydrogen at all because it's always 1s, always 1s. If we move on to this example, what's the hybridization at that carbon? How many groups? Three. So it's what? sp2. You could think about it as S1, P2, and just add up the one and the two, and you get three. So, you know, how about this oxygen? You have one, two, three. So that's SP2. Okay, now I'm going to do some of these because you can see here that you have a difference with the outer. I'm going to do that later. I'll come back and do that later. Here, each of these oxygens has three groups. One, two, three. <laughs> So sp2, the boron, boron has this weird property that it can be accommodated by only six electrons. That's three, three of these three bonds. We have three groups of electrons. That's sp2, okay? And here, carbon has two groups of electrons. What is it? sp, two groups, sp. Okay, now let's let's look at some of the outer atoms. All right, so now we can figure out the hybridization at the outer atoms too. All right, do we have to worry about anything in this molecule? The outer atoms here are all hydrogen. They can only have a 1s, so that's done. Same with the NH NH3, same. Here, water same hcl there's nothing to do there there's nothing to do with this one with the two h's and c um c, h2co again just h's but here now we have something else going on let's look oh we already did the two yeah these are all have three groups so this is all done um but let's do this one we have the outer atoms here so how many groups of electrons on that oxygen Four groups. So this O is sp cubed because it has four groups. 
See how it has three lone pairs and a bond. This one has three groups. So this is sp2. Going over here, we already said that the carbon is sp hybridized, but this oxygen here has three groups. So the O is sp2 hybridized. And so um, this one as well. Okay, and what about this nitrogen here? Well, this nitrogen only has two groups. So this is also SP hybridized. Okay. That's when you combine orbitals. That's what hybridized is. When you combine an S, S and P or S and two P's or S and three P's. Five. Electron the electron dot the uh, energy diagram yeah. well so if you need two like this example here yeah. you need so you only choose one of the two p's along with one, with the two s so you circle two of them here that gives that may, that's that gives you these two hybrid orbitals here Back when we did um, C2H4, we had two hydrogens on each carbon. We would circle three because the number of groups tells you the number of hybrids, right? You always have one 2S, so you just pick the number of two Ps that you need, right? So SP3 gives you four orbitals. You would circle the S and all three Ps. SP2, you would circle the S and two of the P's. Exactly. You don't use the core electrons. It's all about the valence electrons. Okay, so there's this exercise that I'm going to go through. It's very similar to what we just did. So we're going to write the Lewis structure for each of these. So we have SeCl2. Selenium is right under sulfur in the periodic table. So it has six valence electrons. Oh, this is, yeah, activity six. So which handout is this? I think it's this. If you don't have one, I have a bunch of them. Yeah. The first chapter eight activities handout. I gave it out to five. Or the <clears throat> You need one. Anyone else need one? Okay. SeCl2 has six valence electrons and there's two Cl's. How many valence for Cl? Seven. So that's 14 and six, that's 20 electrons. That's 10 pairs. Selenium goes in the middle. We have a, a Cl on each side. And now that takes care of two of the pairs. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so this is uh, an allowed Lewis structure for SeCl two. Um, how many groups of electrons? One, two, three, four. So, what is the electron geometry here? All right. Well, the electron geometry we say is tetrahedral, right? And he says correctly that there are four groups of electrons. That means you will have sp3 hybrids, okay, on the selenium. So that's, we did the central atom, but now I'd also like to do the outer atoms. What about the outer atoms? We could do that as well. What would be the hybridization of the Cl? Yes. So this is a, this was a selenium. Now we're doing the Cl electron geometry. 
is tetrahedral again. There are four groups. So that's sp3 hybrids. And here I, I put that down again. So you have it again. Okay, so that's each chlorine really. So what does that mean that this bond here would be? Pi is only when you have two Ps. And the first bond is always gonna be sigma. You only have pi bonds when you have multiple bonds. So this is sigma. What is the hybridization at the SE? It's sp3, so that has to be what overlaps. And Cl is also sp3. Now, what orbitals are these lone pairs in? Well, it's whatever we said the hybridization was at that atom. That's where those lone pairs will be. Yeah. This is not sp. This is sp3. sp3. No, that's not true. That's not true at all. We did methane last time. It's all single bonds, all, all hybrids. We always hybridize. If we have four groups, it's sp3. If we have two groups of electrons, it's sp2. If we have two groups, it's sp. Yeah, we hybridize all of them. Okay. Yeah, they're in sp3 because that's the hybridization of the chlorine. So all three of these are lone pairs in sp3. And of course, this is the same on the other side. Sigma, sp3, sp3. And these lone pairs, like these lone pairs, are all in sp3 hybrids because that's all there is there. So the second one is NO2 minus. So this is six valence electrons times two. This is five. And then we have one for the extra charge. Oh, that's a five. I think like a six. 18 electrons. That's nine pairs. Okay. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. What do I do now? Yes, yeah, central atom. I do not make a multiple bond until I have to. And now I have to, because I have no octet on this nitrogen. So I will take a lone, a lone pair. And now I'm going to ask you, is this molecule linear? Yes, it is not linear. It looks linear. How do I know it's not linear? Why isn't it linear? It has three groups of electrons. One, two, well, I should draw it on the real version, the correct version. One, two, three groups. So what is the geometry here? Trigonal planar. So it's trigonal planar. What is the hybridization at the N? SP2, because there are three SP2 orbitals and we need three equivalent orbitals to make this shape work. Okay, so it's SP2. What about these lone pairs? How many groups of electrons on the oxygen? Right, four. So what the lone pairs will be in sp3 hybrids. 
So what is this bond then? Sigma. And of course it's sigma because you know you have an sp you have sp squared hybrids or something like that on the nitrogen pointing at I'm sorry, on the oxygen pointing at the sp3 hybrids on the nitrogen and so this is the internuclear axis and that's where the overlap is but always when you have a single bond it's always sigma and it's sigma what is the overlap here between what sp3 and sp2 right because the s is sp2 on nitrogen and sp3 on oxygen so the sigma sp3 sp2 where is this lone pair here that's sp2 because that is the hybridization at the nitrogen which we have already determined because you have three groups of electrons okay now We're going to do a lot of examples of this. So the hybridization is sp2 on the night. All right, so now we're on this oxygen, which also is sp2 because it's got three groups of electrons. So the lone pair will be in an sp2 hybrid. Now we have two bonds here. One of them is a sigma. Sigma from overlap of what? sp2 and sp2 because we have three groups of electrons on this nitrogen and this oxygen okay what is the other bond pi bond from the leftover two p's because when you make sp2 hybrids you haven't used the third p orbital that's left over for pi bonding and that goes above and below the line of connection here. So that makes it a pi bond. So, I mean, this is not, you get the hang of this if you practice it. So you have to practice it. So let's see, we have CO2. Okay, let's do CO2. CO2. But now, this is the uh, geometry for the we don't use the side of 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 the side She's asking if we always determine the geometry only from the central atom. Sometimes you have more than one central atom, and then you will determine the geometry at each one. Yeah. So carbon dioxide, we've drawn this Lewis structure many times. This is the... That's the one that's considered the Lewis structure for CO2. And what type of hybridization do you have at the carbon? Two groups, SP. At this oxygen and this oxygen, you have three groups, SP2. So this is a sigma bond between SP and SP2. So is this. I wouldn't care if you labeled the top one. It doesn't matter, top or bottom. Each of these is a pi bond from overlaps of the two Ps. And these lone pairs are in what orbital? sp2 because there's one two three groups of electrons and the same for the other side okay and finally we have cof2 okay that's right <laughs> it's moving by itself oh, okay now we have COF2. So the carbon is in the middle, O, and then we have these two Fs. Our valence electrons are four and six and two times seven. 
that's 24 electrons, that's 12 pairs. I've got three bonds there so far, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Hmm, what's missing? Yeah, so actually I'm gonna take this lone pair and make a double bond. And I can see that my geometry is trigonal here because I have three groups of electrons on that carbon. Okay, so this is the Lewis structure. Now, why couldn't you do this? I'm just gonna ask you, why would this be worse? That's right, if I did that, no, actually fluorine is more electronegative. Oh. Yeah, if I did this, one, two, three, four, five, six, fluorine would be plus one here. Oh, would it? One, two, three, yeah, because it's valence is seven. It'd be seven minus six. That's valence minus actual, because it has one, two, three, four, and half of each of these bonds, okay? The oxygen would be minus one and the fluorine here would be zero and so would the carbon. But over here, the formal charges are zero, 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 and zero. That's far more desirable than putting a plus one formal charge on the most electronegative atom in the periodic table. So that's why this would be a better, so that's just a little review of what formal charges can give you. But anyway, in terms of the hybridization, at this carbon, we have three groups. What is that going to give me for hybrids? SP2, thank you, someone in the back from answer, for answering. What is the hybridization at each fluorine? How many groups? SP3. How many groups at oxygen? SP2, there's three groups. All right, so the lone pairs here are in SP2. These lone pairs are in SP3. Same here. Okay, so what about these bonds? So I have this bond and this bond. The first one is a sigma, and now the oxygen is sp2, the carbon is sp2, so it's from overlap of the sp2s. The pi, as always, <laughs> is 2p, 2p, with that leftover p on each one, because you had sp2 hybrids. Um, I didn't write it down, but you have sp2 here as well. So there's a leftover p orbital. Well, what is this bond here? sigma from overlap of sp3 and sp2. Yeah, you're getting it. Sigma, sp3, sp2. Okay, that's how you do it. This is not, this is actually, I think one of the easier to actually do it, maybe not to understand it totally completely, but to actually do it. Yeah, she asks, when you have a double bond, we're always going to have a leftover 2P. Yes, when you have a double bond, you will have one leftover 2P on each of those atoms. When you have a triple bond, you will have two leftover 2Ps on each atom, a triple bond. The only one bond is sigma, the other two are pi. That was, remember, back in acetylene, where we had only used, we made SP hybrids. When you have, when you make SP hybrids, like we did here, so double bond is one left over two P. A triple bond means you have two left over two Ps. Look back here. These were the two left over two Ps in acetylene. That's how you formed the two pi bonds. Okay. Now take out this sheet. This is activity seven. And here is a new little twist that I have to tell you about. It's always a little twist, right? So the little twist is that a lot of times in courses, 
<laughs> like organic chemistry, especially, and in Chem 104 and other places, the structures don't always have the lone pairs. They won't show you the lone pairs. Once you leave Chem 103, you're really not going to see them anymore. It will be assumed that you know that they are there. So how do you know if a lone pair is missing? What do you look for? Octets, exactly. So on this carbon, does carbon have a full octet here? Yes. Does nitrogen? No. So you're going, you know that there's a lone pair there that isn't showing up. So you have to put it in because without that lone pair, it does not have an octet. And so you see a structure in a book, you have to assume they've given you the correct structure. But what they leave out is the lone pairs. All right. So now we can do this. How many groups of electrons on carbon we have already said? Well, I don't know if we already said, but there's two, the triple bond and then the single bond. What is the hybridization at the carbon then? It's SP. How many groups on the nitrogen? See, if you didn't know that a lone pair was missing, you'd get this wrong. You'd think there was one group, which is not. But now we'd have the lone pair. We have, oh, there's two groups. So what's the hybridization? SP. So now we can say that this the first of these bonds, or one of them, is a sigma from overlap of the SPs. What does that make the other two bonds? Pi, and what do pi bonds always form from? That's it. What is this lone pair in? SP, because that's the hybridization at that nitrogen. I'll write it down. Okay, and this bond, what is it then? From overlap of the other SP and the 1S on the hydrogen. That's it. So now let's, you know, let's work on some of these. Okay. What's missing here? A lone pair. Because you need to have a full octet. You could put the lone pair over here. It's, you know, I'm just drawing it over there because I know that it's 120 degrees because it's three groups of electrons, but you could certainly solve this problem without putting the lone pair at the right angle. Because what I'm asking you is like, what are all these things? What's this? What's this? What's this? What's this? And what's this? <laughs> and what is this? So that's a lone pair. What is the hybridization at this nitrogen? Two, right, because there are three groups of electrons. Lone pair and the other two, the, the, the double bond and the single bond. Um, what is the hybridization at the carbon here? How many groups? No, it's sp2, because there's one, two, three, okay? Three groups, sp2. Now you know everything you need to know. So what is this bond? For the, one of these bonds is what? Sigma from overlap of sp2 and sp2. What is this bond here? This one, the sigma, yep. I always put one S last, but it doesn't really matter. Same here. What about this one? SP2, 1S. And what about this one remaining here? It's gotta be a pi, 2P, yeah. This lone pair is in SP2, okay, yeah. Yeah, you can't have more than that. If you have a triple bond, you can only have one other bond. No, you have one of these would be sigma and two of them will be pi. Yeah, if you have carbon, carbon like that, sigma, pi. Yep. 
H2S. H2S is very much like H2O. Sulfur has six valence. There's two for the two hydrogens. That's four, eight electrons. That's four pairs. S, H, H. One, two, three, four. What's the geometry at the sulfur? What's it called? Tetrahedral. So, so really I should draw sort of, it's not a straight, it's not a linear molecule. It's like, you know, it has uh, the two rabbit ears, whatever you want to call them. And it's got your hydrogens over here. What is this bond angle between the H, we call it the HSH bond angle? You could think about it. You know what it looks like. It's just the same like in water. It's bent, but what's the angle? Well, oh, I don't think I'm sharing the screen. Am I? No. Oh, wait, I have two of them. <laughs> it's not good. Okay. What did I ask? <laughs> yeah, what is that bond angle? So what is the base bond angle for tetrahedral? But this angle here is not quite that. Yeah, it's a little bit less, why? Yeah, so we write less than about 109. That's all you need to know. Well, you need to know that if you had one lone pair and three bonds, it'd be a little bit bigger. It would be less than about 109, but it would be a little bigger than this less than about 109. <laughs> but anyway, all right, that's that's just neither here nor there. So <laughs> what is the hybridization at that sulfur? SP3. So this is a lone pair in the SP3. So is this, what's this bond? which is the same as this one. Right. All right, I'm going to talk about something else for a few minutes and we're gonna come back to doing these examples, okay? So there's some more examples here and, but I wanna talk about benzene a little bit. Okay, so this molecule here, it's gonna take, it's gonna be fun to draw. This is a very famous molecule. <laughs> it's called benzene, carcinogenic. <laughs> back when I used to work in the lab in college, it wasn't carcinogenic back then. No, we didn't know it was carcinogenic. So I remember getting some benzene on myself back in those days. Um, here it is, it's very, it's nice. However, you need to have two different resonance forms. Notice that, look at the position of the double bond and how it changes. So you could see that in the structure on the left, you have double bonds here, here, and here. In the structure on the right, you have them in the other position. And that's because you really need both of these to describe the bonding in benzene. Benzene is very common. You have benzene rings all over organic chemistry and they don't draw them the way I've drawn them. This is how they draw them. First of all, you have to know that every vertex is a carbon. 
And then instead of putting double bonds in there, they put a circle because that indicates that you have sort of incorporates both of these resonance forms that 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 um, those electrons from that double bond are really spread out over the whole ring. But let's talk about the bonding here in benzene. What is the hybridization? You can go to the end of this, um, the last page of this handout, and it has a nice picture of benzene. What's the hybridization at each carbon? Count up, how many electron groups are there? Anybody else have an opinion? Because all I hear is Veronica. <laughs> yeah, there's three groups. So it's sp2. So each of these carbons has an sp2 hybrid. Oh, I'm, I'm saying huh because I want to draw it. Uh, uh, do I really want to draw it? I don't think so. I'll just do one vertex. <laughs> so we have a carbon, right? And then we have sp2, sp2, and sp2. And then here's another carbon. And it has sp2. SP2 and SP2. Then we have hydrogen. So there's a hydrogen here. There's a hydrogen here. So, but within the ring, we have all these overlapping SP2 hybrids, which are hard to draw. So we have a carbon atom here. That's the nucleus, carbon atom, carbon atom. So we have all of this Stigma sp2 sp2 stigma sp2 sp2. So basically, each one of these bonds, each one of these, this the first of the double bond here, these are sigma sp2 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 all around the ring. All right, and because of sp2 hybrids, or because there's three groups of electrons, we have a trigonal planar geometry. That makes this entire molecule planar. Benzene is a flat molecule. So everything that I'm talking about is like C, 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 C. These are all sigma bonds and the hydrogens are also in the plane because they're part of that trigonal planar geometry. So this is all in a plane. So what do you think? Where do you think the leftover? We have a leftover P orbital, right? We have SP2. So we have one leftover P orbital on each carbon. What did you say? Does it come up? Yes, exactly. The leftover P's are like this. They're away from the plane. They're pointing up and down. And in one resonance form, you have overlaps. Well, let me draw the others, let's see. You have this and this, and then you skip a couple here, then you have these two, then you skip, and then you have these two. But the other resonance form has the p orbitals overlapping, the other p orbitals overlapping. So it'd be between these two and these two and these two. Now that shows a real weakness with this theory. The weakness is that you need to have two pictures for one molecule. The heck did I do here? Uh, okay, it was nice before, but that's nice again. Okay, so you need, so, so this is definitely a weakness with valence bond theory, but that's what it is. Okay, so we have the molecule, 
The hybridization is sp2. The overall shape is planar. It's in a plane. Where are the p orbitals? They stick out above and below the plane. Where is the pi electron density? Well, you know, it's like if this is the benzene, it's like above and below the plane of the molecule. Sorry. That's it. That's all. You, that's all. I'm not, I'm not gonna tell I'm not I'm not gonna tell you test you on benzene. It's not good. Um in benzene, no. Will you please? Electron density is simply the density of electrons. So, okay, that's all I'm saying here. How did you get, how did you get the so th this is pi 2p 2p. So this is the pi, these are the three pi bonds. So the pi electron density is like above and below the plane because that's where they're overlapping. All right, if you think that's bad, I'm gonna show you something else. <laughs> I'm going to show you, <laughs> this is not on the final, but I want to show it to you anyway. These are the molecular orbitals of benzene. This is a theory that is actually believed to be true in benzene. So this is the valence bond picture that I just showed you. And we know that these P orbitals overlap above and below the plane. In molecular orbital theory, that's exactly what you have. You have an orbital for the entire molecule. These are the orbitals for the entire molecule that you fill with electrons. And, and, um, and you could see that's above and below the plane in that MO. Anyway, that's because the, the P orbitals are sticking up above and below the plane. And so their overlaps are below, above and below the plane. That's nature for you. <laughs> Time is it? All right, so let's do some of this practice. Where are we? Okay, let's go back. Okay, so there's lots of different things you could practice. This is that activity that we were just doing. I'm actually going to give you the Lewis structure of this so that you don't have to spend a lot of time doing that. So what I would like you to do for all of these, first of all, figure out where the lone pairs are if they're not already there. So let, let's do this one, actually. Let's do this. This is better. Where are the lone pairs missing on this molecule? Yeah, but how many are missing? On which one? And how many are missing on this one? Two. You had to add those to make an octet. Don't try to figure out the hybridization without seeing if you need some lone pairs. All right, now that you have these lone pairs, you can go through and figure out what the hybridization is. So let's call this carbon number one, carbon number two, carbon number one. What is the hybridization? No, oh yeah, sp3. Carbon number two, sp2. What about the oxygen? sp Oh, right. <laughs> SP and two, oxygen number two. Yes. So now, what would the overlaps for this orbital be? What type of, sorry, bond? What type of bond would this be? Sigma from overlap of. So now you can do the other ones. Go for it. If you're very fast at this, 
you can move on to this one or else you have you could do it at home the one that um this one which says balance bond activity last class this is basically the same activity with different molecules so it's just more practice the one So you know where we are, right? We're on page eight, I think, of activity, activities for chapter eight. It's activity seven. All right. Get your material. You know, I'm going to talk to the solution to this, so people go to your paper and just put it there wrong. <laughs>
Really, like that. What? I, I grabbed an extra No, take whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she was in the post. Oh, shit. Yes, sir. Good. 